9 and 20 knives, 30 basins of gold, silver basins of a second sort, 410, and other vessels a thousand. All the vessels of gold and silver were 5,400. 5,400 vessels of gold and silver. Do you think there might have been some value or worth in that? That literally was the treasure of Israel. And when Israel was conquered, the treasure of Israel was brought by Nebuchadnezzar into the house of his gods. And it symbolized, we possess the treasure of the nation of Israel. You know what happened when Cyrus was stirred up? Cyrus gave up his treasure. He said, this is the thing that I valued and I brought to a place where it didn't belong. But God, it actually belongs to you. And I don't care what it costs me, that's where it's going. You know when we get stirred up as believers, sometimes it'll cost us. You know it'll cost you your career if God wants to move you. You know sometimes it'll, it'll cost you a habit. Sometimes it'll cost you financially. When God moves His people, folks, He's going to put things where they belong. And we need to remember who things belong to in our lives. What if God tries to move you? Are you holding on to your treasure? Saying, you know what, I need it here. I want it for me. How long could Cyrus have God's treasure when he died? Eternally. He couldn't keep that physical treasure, but he could keep the treasure that he had when he gave it to God eternally. It was eternal. Christian, when God moves you, can I challenge you, encourage you? You're not giving up anything. When you give to God, don't have this attitude, well, you know what, God's a beggar, and I support Him this month. When you give to God, understand you're putting treasure where it belongs. God, when you saved me, you bought me with a price. You know, the Bible doesn't say, as believers, the liberty that we have in Christ Jesus, it doesn't say, hey, we are now the masters and other people are the slaves. It says, before you were the servants of the devil, and now you're the servants of God. And too many believers mistake Christian liberty, which gives us freedom from sin, which gives us freedom from the world, which gives us freedom from the bondage that's in Satan that ultimately ensnares and traps us and destroys our lives. And it gives us hope in Jesus Christ, but we are the bond servants, the bond slaves of Christ. Literally, we are the slaves of God. And too many of us have this attitude of ownership. Well, God, I'd serve you, but you know, I don't have enough life to have time for you. I'm too busy with the things that I've got to do. God, this is what I need. Do you belong to God? See, folks, when you give to God, you're putting the treasure where it belonged. And Cyrus understood the treasure doesn't belong in the house of my gods. It belongs in the house of God. And he got his treasure where it was supposed to be. That's why the Scripture says in Matthew chapter 6, Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through it and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust doth not corrupt, and thieves cannot... I, well, I'm misquoting that. Can, thieves do not break and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Well, we know what happened to old Nebuchadnezzar when he had his treasure in the wrong place, don't we? Seven years. He got seven years as an insane man. And he left the treasure of the house of God in a house of small g gods. And this guy Cyrus got stirred up and he put the treasure where it belonged. Christian, can I say to you this morning that it might be that God wants to move you? And when He does, it's going to be reallocating treasure to where it belongs. I'm not talking about finances. You know, so many people think blessings all about finances. You know, money matters so little in the whole perspective of eternity. It really does. You know, a person can have great wealth or they can be very... Uh, I guess the, on the opposite end of the spectrum, it really doesn't matter at all with regards to whether or not they have a right relationship with God. God's not impressed with money. He's the creator of the world. He made money. He owns it. And God can move wealth wherever He wants to. He can move a king wherever He wants to. The Bible says the king's heart's in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, He moveth it whithersoever He will. And God could take old Cyrus and He could say, Cyrus, you want to keep the treasure in your house of God's, but I'm moving it. And Cyrus couldn't have done a thing in the world about it. And Christian, if you think for one moment you can hold on to something and God can't do anything about it, you're just greatly mistaken. Sometimes in order to move us, God's got to get a hold of our treasure. Whatever it is. Where's your treasure? Well, it's where your heart is. We always put our heart where our treasure's at. For some folks, that could be money, but most of us, that's not really what it is. Most of us, it's relationships. Most of us, it's, it's, uh, it's the way we spend our time. It's what we like to do. And God says, you know what? That doesn't belong there. It belongs over here. Christian, if you allow God to stir you, He'll move your treasure. 
and it'll move your heart. And you'll have the greatest joy, you'll have the greatest peace, the greatest contentment, and God will do great things with your life. We are going to see, as we study through the book of Ezra, revival in the nation of Israel. And it all started when one person said, you know what? God, you are God. And God, the treasure doesn't belong here. And you can move it wherever you want to. And God does great things. Folks, I believe with all my heart that God wants to do something with you. And I'm not talking about the person next to you. I'm talking about the person that's sitting in your seat. And God's got something for you. You're alive, you're breathing, and you've got breath. And because of that, that is a great indication that God has a plan for you. And if you'll just put your treasure in the right place, you'll just let God move you. You'll just come to a place and you say, God, I love you. And God, I've been stirred by you. And I know you're calling me to this or to that. And God, what you want is what I want. What your plan is is what my plan is. And I'm going to delight myself in you. And you're going to give me the desires of my heart. And that's the thing that's going to fulfill my desires. God, my treasure is where it belongs. I want to tell you something, folks. God will turn around a city like Fort Lauderdale. He'll take somebody like old Cyrus that will be the last person on the earth that anybody ever thought would have his treasure in the right place. Kings aren't supposed to behave that way. You say, but he was a king. He had great authority. I'm telling you, a king would have been the hardest person in the world to make a proclamation that the God of Israel is God. Can you imagine how popular that would be among all the polytheists in Persia? The people that helped to bring those treasures into the house of the gods and him saying treasures going out? You just think about the pressure that he would have had politically. And I'm going to tell you something. It wasn't a natural thing for old Cyrus to do. But it's a natural thing for somebody who loves God to do. He made a proclamation. And God took the least likely person in the world and did with him what it would seem that no man could do. And there was revival in the nation of Israel. It began with one person. What about a Christian? What if God wanted to do something with you? Is your treasure so locked down in the wrong place? Is your heart so hard and so cold that God couldn't stir it? He couldn't move you? Or are you ready to respond to God's Word? You know what that is. You know what God wants in your life. I don't. Listen, I can look at a countenance and I can look at actions, but I can never look at a heart. It's God that looks at your heart, and He'll reveal it to you if you'll let Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You so much for the Scripture and the truth that's in it. Lord, I ask this morning it would be our desire to be used by You to be stirred. Lord, I ask that You would take Your Word as preached this morning by this simple individual. And God, I ask that You would make Your Word come alive in hearts and that we would see the application as individuals that You want us to see and that You would change us to be more like Jesus Christ. We pray in His precious name. Amen. If you stand at your feet at this time and open your hymn books up, we're going to sing a song of invitation. I just want to sing I Surrender All. Let me see. I don't have a page number in front of us. Everybody knows that song. We don't. Know. <coughs> page 394. We're going to stand to our feet and we're going to have the invitation at this time. The invitation is just a time when we would invite you, if God's spoken to you, to not leave here like we came. Go ahead and stand up. Brother Butch is getting us all started. <coughs> Nobody else is standing. We're going to sing I Surrender All. And I want to ask you to do this during our invitation. If as we sing I Surrender All, if you haven't surrendered at all, would you just be honest about it and not sing? Don't lie to God. Say, God, I've surrendered all when you haven't. And if you haven't surrendered all, would you just go ahead and take care of the thing that God put His finger on this morning in your heart? I don't know what that is, but God does not you do. Would you be willing to put your treasure in the place where it belongs? Would you be willing to place your treasure in the hands of God? As we sing this morning, the invitation would be just, we'd invite you, to, if God has spoken to you about something, to not leave here like He came, but to take care of matters. Listen, my friend, you and I are one prayer away from heaven. And you can, with the help of the Holy Spirit and be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, you can go directly into the Holy Throne Room where God lives. And you can speak to Him and you can take care of whatever it is that God's spoken to you about this morning. I don't know what it is, but you do. And as we sing... We just let God work and let God move you. You say, Pastor, I need somebody to pray with me. I need someone to give me Bible answers. Well, that's what we're here for. And if you come forward during our time of invitation, I'll be glad to open a Bible and show you from the Scripture. I'll be glad to show you if you're not saved. You're here this morning. You've never trusted Christ as your Savior. Friend, your heart doesn't belong to Jesus, and it ought to. If you're not saved and you're here this morning, uh, just come and say, Pastor, I don't know. I'm going to heaven. And I'd be glad to open a Bible and show you how you can be confident that you have eternal life.